Hello, and welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. Many, many thanks for choosing to click on the thumbnail and to watch my content. Very much appreciated as always. And as the thumbnail shows you, this is uh, vlog number one of my Raval Millennium Falcon build. Uh, I'm going to be doing it um, as a series of vlogs, uh, mainly due to the fact that, like I've always said before, there are a million and one videos on here showing you how to glue two plastic pieces together. There are loads and loads. Uh, videos uh, showing you how to build this kit and also how to put lighting into this kit. Now I am not that much uh, of a, a good enough modeler to put lighting into it plus it's uh, having the money to do that as well so I'm just going to be building this straight out the box uh, as I do <laughs> with most uh, of my uh, model builds. Um, so I say what I'm going to be doing here is for this first video, uh, we're going to be doing looking at preparation and then uh, vlogs two, three, four, uh, how many it takes. Um, I'm going to bring you up to date with how far I've got, any little problems that I've run into. I think that way it's going to make it a little easier for me. And as well, if you're building this kit, you know, it gives you a little heads up as well on what to look out for. You probably uh, see something that I do you think oh I can I think of a better way of doing that which is great if, if uh, you get some help out of my vlogs then uh, that's all the better and it's made them worthwhile doing so I say today it's just going to be nice it's all going to be nice and relaxed vlog style uh, I'm not sitting here saying you this is how you do it and this is what you should do and don't listen to anybody else you do it your own way you enjoy your kit, you spend all your money on it, you enjoy the kit, you do it when you want, how much you want, and you put as much into it as you want to. But uh, one of the things that I would say to all beginner modelers out there, that preparation is key. Get all your preparation done first, which is what I'm going to go through in this vlog, and it makes uh, the whole building experience a lot easier and a lot more fun. So. Less of a waffle, I'm going to get the table over there so I can rearrange the camera and uh, before we touch any of the plastic, we're going to go through this instruction manual and see what's what. So, see you in a minute. Right, so as always, uh, if you're a beginner, uh, like I said, preparation is key so you really need to go through this instruction manual thoroughly uh, when you've done all that you'll notice uh, this is how Revell do their paint call outs there seems to be a lot of paint here but you have to remember that although this is a big kit a lot of it is going to be uh, the greys the light greys and the medium grey uh, that is going to be the bulk of it, uh, I think, uh, for the black as well on the inside. And all these other colours here are just for little highlights and other little bits. Uh, so just bear that in mind before you go rushing out and buying a million one paints. Have a look in your stash what you've got, because unless you want it absolutely uh, film accurate, uh, you may have something in your stash that is near as damn. And you don't have to go out and uh, you know buy extra paint or have a go at mixing it yourself acrylics acrylic paints because they are water-based they are absolutely brilliant for mixing your own paints together so if you've got say this blue here uh, but you've got the one that's a bit darker mix a bit of white in with it 
and see if you can mix it and get it get it to that so you don't have to go out and buying uh, lots and lots of paint it's it's not really necessary um, myself as well I don't own an airbrush and this kit is just too big to paint with a paintbrush so rattle cans are going to be the order of the day for me so uh, for, you, for all the bulky parts all the main parts it's going to be uh, black for the inside and the base coat of the grey uh, for the outer surfaces of the Millennium Falcon. Um, there are other bits of grey that we'll, I'll show you in a minute, which are going to be for panels. Uh, we can get away with masking off and using a spray can if you're very, very careful. Or because they are panels, you can actually go in two or three coats thinly with a brush and you'll get a decent enough uh, coverage there so um, as we look through here there's a lot it's, I say a lot of work to do but it's not it just seems a lot there are only uh, for the size of the kit I think it's 20 steps to you do before you go on with the decklin so uh, not overly busy but if you go through the instructions as we can see inside the cockpit you have to spray inside the cockpit black uh, then it's telling you to spray the whole inside paint the whole inside and blend in falcon black I think that is because you have options uh, of having the door open and it just uh, instead of just seeing white plastic in there uh, that dark is going to uh, make it a little bit uh, a little bit better plus of course if you're going to put lights in you'll need to paint the inside of it uh, black anyway to stop any light leakage in so uh, I think that would that's going to be probably the first job for me to do is to look through the instructions of everything that's on going to be on the interior on the inside and get them outside with some uh, a rattle can of black there again you see that's black there uh, and get those uh, painted first I'll probably use my uh, uh, primer of choice I, I use Humbrol Grey Primer so I'll probably put a coat of that down first then I could put uh, a coat of the black down or probably two coats depending on how, how the coverage is um, another thing I've noticed on this this kit, the Revell are telling you to paint as you're going along before you've actually put your two top half and your bottom half together. Now, for me, that just leave, it's, it leaves you know there's that risk that there's going to be joins that you don't want. Uh, I don't know how this model is going to fit together. I think it's a reboxing. Of a bandai kit i'm not sure could be wrong on that if it is then the, the fit should be pretty good but you're still not going to be wanting gaps i mean this is a, a spacecraft it's going out into space and you're not going to be wanting gaps in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to build it and then i will paint it any bits that can be left off and painted separately like the radar dish and the tower uh, the guns and sort of the little add-ons because uh, I'm going to be doing my build is going to be using the uh, landing struts as well so they'll be built and painted separately and then I can get in and paint uh, the whole body of the Millennium Falcon uh, at least in the base colour of that light grey that uh, it suggests you use and then I could take it from there uh, of course I'll put my primer down first so any gaps can be dealt with and then I can do uh, the main main part of the painting that way that's the way I'm going to do it uh, like I say Ravella telling us to do the painting first and then glue the two halves together uh, but uh, I say I, I can see a lot of problems there especially with this part here putting the cockpit uh, cowling on um, because if you look at the picture on the front of the instructions there is an awful seam line there 
that looks terrible and that would bug my face off. Uh, this is, uh, like I say, it's supposed to be an airtight spaceship. Uh, that's going to be leaking air, you know, that bit of extra realism, of course. Uh, so I'd want to get those, that line filled in. Uh, that part there is uh, a clear part. So how the fit on that is going to be, I don't know. Are there going to be gaps there? But I'm definitely going to be wanting to fill the gaps and then get all the uh, cockpit glass areas maxed off and then paint it and then you get a uniform colour but that's how I'm going to do it uh, like I say I'm just going to go through uh, all my, my paints here find out uh, what I've got and what I haven't and what I can make up with I think the only problem I'm going to have paint wise is this part here because that's for the engines uh, it's a clear strip of plastic I haven't got that blue I don't think I've got any blue actually so I'll, I will be looking uh, for that blue uh, I've got oil paints which I could do with that that blue but they're not going to uh, paint onto the, the clear plastic part I don't think so uh, but that blue as well will come in handy uh, for my IndyCar which is also a build I'm going to be doing uh, Probably around the same time, I don't know, I'll see, see how I go on. So, uh, you're going to find all these little parts here as well that go on onto the bulk, bulkhead and they're all going to need to be painted black. So that's going to be my first job. Um, I think all this will be uh, built, painted black that I can uh, paint the, the chairs separately. Uh, it's like I say as well, just there is that letter P, which is in the paint guide, is uh, a fiery red, and it's, it's just a little blob of red. So I don't think you want to be going out and buying, especially the, that pot of paint, especially just that one bit. You know, you may want it and say, yeah, put it in your stash, but I have bought paint for models in the past where I've just used one blob of paint from. I'm not using them again since, and sometimes they do dry out. So uh, that's just one thing to, you know, be aware of. You buy this pot of paint and then you don't use it at all after that. I've got <laughs> pots of paint I haven't even opened, so and they've been up there a couple of years. So, you know, a bit of planning, a bit of forward thinking, plan ahead. So, okay. Uh, so, plan is get all the uh, interior uh, painted black. That's going to be the first job. Second job, get the, uh, the cockpit made up painted weathered that's all that done and of course i'm going to be the landing feet they are going to be wanting to be painted i'm going to paint the build and paint those separately because uh, i don't think there's going to be too much of a, an, an issue when it comes to putting them in onto the bottom of the falcon for gap wise i don't think that's going to be an issue at all so there we go, and then after that we can do uh, <coughs> all the the, uh, the platform there. So like I say, the guns they can be put on separately after it's been you've had the base coat painted down on there. Uh, that part there, ignore that because like I say, that is if you're having the Millennium Falcon in flight mode, I'm going to have mine. Uh, in landed mode so uh, all those are going to be uh, made up and yeah it seems to be a lot of it of like I say a lot of these paint call outs are just like fiddly little bits uh, those parts there D the, if you can get the aftermarket decal set you can actually buy the decal that uh, fills all these bits in I'm not going to go down that route it's a bit of expense that I don't think it's really necessary uh, so I'll just find a red that's going to match that um, that there is black whether I mask those off and spray them I don't know I'll see when I come along to it 
Uh, painting of uh, Anselo and Chewbacca as well. That's another little job that's going to be easily done. I'll easily sort it like that. Uh, so like I say, on there, it's telling you to paint that and then glue it on. But now I'm going to glue the canopy on and make sure those seam lines don't look uh, bad or anything. And then I'm going to spray paint it all as one. So there we go. That's my plan. Um, that is your decal call out sheet there. So uh, before you take any of the masking off your clear parts, make sure <laughs> you leave those on till after you've uh, varnished it. I'm going to use a rattle can varnish. This will be uh, a gloss coat first off so I can get the decals down flat and then it'll be uh, a matte coat. And then take... <laughs> Yeah, and then take your masking off. Uh, that's a little lesson I learnt from when I did uh, my Grumman 6D uh, aeroplane. I took the masking tape off the cockpit glass uh, before I varnished it, and that was a big mistake. So you learn from your mistakes, learn from my mistakes, <laughs> and do it that way. And then when it comes to uh, doing all the weather in here, I think I'm going to go in with oil paints on that. Uh, I have got some pastels, but whether they'll go down properly, I don't know. I think I might go uh, the oil paint route and just do a really thin wash of black and just see what I can come up with there on that. So there we go. That's my first vlog. Um, I say, so that's all the preparation uh, I'm going to be doing. Uh, of course, I'm going to be taking, uh, I'm going to be leaving them, sorry, uh, these halves on the sprue so it gives me something to hold on to when I'm uh, spraying uh, the base coat on the outside, uh, on the inside, sorry, for the black. And uh, yeah, so there we go, preparation is the key. I'm now going to go away and uh, see what uh, spray paints I do need. It's like I say, it's going to be black and uh, the base coat with the grey. Then I'm going to see what paint I've got in my stash for the medium grey. Uh, the silver metallic parts, I'm going to be using uh, lead belcher because I think that's probably been the best silver I've, I've come across at the minute. I haven't, I haven't used the Alclad ones, not been able to buy any of those yet, so I know how great they are, but for what I've got in my stash, I'll be using uh, lead belcher on the silver parts. The white parts, I'll be using um, the uh, Games Workshop white. Uh, I think it's called ceramic white. That's an absolutely great white. So that, that part there is actually for, if I can find it, you've got these, these glass part here where the guns go on, the laser cannons go on. It tells you to paint it white. I would have thought it would have been grey to match with the, the rest the uh, the ship I don't know I'll see what they look like white uh, they've all got to be masked off painted as well before they go on the inside so there you go a bit of forward planning have a look in your stash at your paints what you've got you might not need to go out and buy all these paints I mean it goes from A through to Q here you're not going to need all of them uh, because for, like I say for a lot of the time it's just a little dab in, a little dab there. So I'm sure in your stash, if you've got quite a, a few uh, pots of paint in your stash, you're not going to need to go out and buy all these. So there we go, forward planning. So uh, vlog number two, uh, when I've uh, when it comes up, uh, by then I should have done all the painting of the black parts inside. I may. Uh, build up these uh, legs, standing legs, and see how we go on with there. So that's vlog number one over. That's that's the preparation part of it done. Bit of forward planning. Uh, if you do need, need to make notes, make notes. There's, there's no harm in that. So uh, see you for vlog number two. And that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel, it'd be very much appreciated. And also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell.